Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for clicking on this video. April has come, April has gone. We are now in mid-May and I'm barely doing this video per usual. I just did my movie uh, wrap up last week. I ended up doing it live just because I did run out of space on my desktop, my external drive. I got a new one. So this uh, video should be coming to you sometime soon. Uh, we're currently filming on Mother's Day so happy Mother's Day to all the mothers or happy late Mother's Day because I'm not exactly sure when this video will be coming out but happy Mother's Day and I'm just gonna give a little shameless plug here being the best month of the year my birthday's on Friday on the 19th uh so just wanna share that with you guys so we're gonna start off with my BGA stats and then we're gonna move on to what I physically uh, played I have a lot of games here you guys I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually show you guys all the games that I played uh, we're going to hear a lot of the uh, fur baby. April was definitely my most played month. I think that I've had so far. I've played 59 physical games. And I know we're going to be doing BGA uh, stats first. BGA stats. I played uh, two games of Lost Ruins of Ar Arnark. Two games of Obsession. Two games of Boop. Boop. Two games of Splendor. Two of Welcome To. Two of Space Base. And the rest of them were just one-time plays. Earth, Living Forest, Parks, and Ticket to Ride. That is what I did there. And all of that, all those, I only played, I only won four games. Also, it's not on here, but I could have sworn that I finished the uh, My City campaign in April. I'm pretty sure I did. I don't know why it's not here. Maybe because it didn't happen. Maybe I finished it in March. No, I feel like it happened in April. Let's go ahead and get on with the physical because like I said, it's 59 games, y'all. Ooh, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I don't even know where to start. First up, we have Ark Nova. This is one of the games that I played uh, for the challenge here. I played it solo. I've, I've talked about this game before. I love it. It's a little puzzly. Uh, tableau builder. I tried playing with the Arno version and then it wasn't processing that you're on a time schedule when you're doing this challenge so that probably wasn't the best deal. You do a challenge and you play Arc Nova I would highly recommend just doing the solo that it comes here but you're just building a zoo. I've talked about it many times before. Uh, then we're gonna go on with Twilight Inscription. It is a roll and write and it's a smaller version of Twilight Imperium, which I have not played. There is a lot to it, probably not for beginners. I did play this with my sister and was a little bit more complicated in trying to explain it. Because I remember when I tried to learn it, it was also pretty complicated. And of course, as you get more with it, you're like, okay, you kind of understand it. But there's like a lot because you do have four sheets that you're kind of working with. And you know, there's all these bonuses that this triggers that kind of deal. Then we're gonna move on to Arkham Horror, the card game. I've um, only played this ever solo, which is fine because I hear this is one of those games that is better solo. I only have the base game. I don't have any expansions just because I haven't played it as much. I will say, is this the, yes, I will say, oh my God, this box, I feel like it looks heavier. And I like the way it look, feels. But it's a little weekly box. Um, it's best not to put other games on top of it. Uh, because honestly, as soon as I got it, you know, because I like to stack them on as far as how the size of it. So I think I had like two other games. And I didn't even think the other two games that I put on here were as heavy. But the box uh, would like to disagree on it. So like pretty much, like I said, the first moment that I got it, it right away broke. So just kind of keep that in mind. But it's a horror themed game. You're fighting like Cthulhu kind of situations. You're investigators. It is scary once you get into the attic and then you find stuff. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but when you get up there, you're having to find stuff. And it's like some scary things. I'm just like, oh my God. So we're gonna move on to Sagrada. I think I only played this one once as well. I've talked about this many times also this is part of my 10 by 10 challenge oh before i forget this is how my 10 by 10 challenge is looking as i did incorporate incorporate if i could speak uh quite a few games that are part of my 10 by 10 challenge was a grata it's a uh, dice placement you're trying to make a beautiful stained glass window and you're trying to put these colored dice in particular spaces um on your little cosita that you have in there 
and there's restrictions on you can't have the same color the same number um with it next to each other so it gets very very puzzly i really love it and then you kind of have your your secret objective and then just general objectives that you're trying to do you have tools that'll help you i really enjoyed this game solo and multiplayer um, when you play it solo which is how i ended up playing it you're basically just trying to beat the number that the ai has basically the dice that you don't use you draft four dice you're going to pick two each round and the two that you don't use basically go on the round on the yeah on the round tracker here and whatever the face value of each die that's basically the number that you're trying to beat and then we're going to move on to hadrian's wall this is another one part of the five by five challenge so another one that has combos i love combos you have goals that you're trying to complete each round once you finish like all your people you get you pick two cards when you draw two cards and you pick one to go into um your little basically the goal that you're trying to accomplish you get points at the end of the game and then the other one you're going to use the resource aka the people that you're going to be uh hiring to help you you know protect your wall build buildings where then we have the quacks of quacks you're trying to build the best potion kind of deal it's a bag builder the first few rounds are kind of dull because your bag is kind of lame then we have anno 1800 this is the first time that i played it at two player i tried it solo because i saw uh randall from randall tries right randall <laughs> terrible they like a solo version so i tried uh i tried to learn it that way but i didn't mean this because um gnarly carly talked about this one a lot last year so you're just trying to build like the best industrial development in an island there is a lot to this this game as you can tell by the bureau here battery ran out we need to clear out the space here then i played a uh, lost ruins of Anarch, I do have the um, Expedition Leaders expansion in this box right here, which is great because, you know, this is one of those boxes that it's more box than anything. This expansion definitely amps the game tremendously just because the leaders, the people that are involved, it just gives you that um, asymmetrical deal. Everybody has like its own. I think that's what it's, I think that's right. I, I could totally be wrong. I'm still like not used to all the the stuff that <laughs> pertains here if you guys are new you're like what the hell are you talking about stephanie i'm mainly a movie related channel and i'm just kind of like been dipping my toes well at this point i don't feel like i'm really dipping my toes i feel like i'm standing in your pool just kind of there chilling gives you really that indiana jones tomb raider vibe you're up there you're exploring you're unlocking new places you can stay down here in the campsite but you know what it's boring there you get the simple just kind of resources to then help you go out and explore more into this um uh, what's it called the the jungle and stuff and, and you're unlocking it and it frank stop i keep trying to eat my board games and, and and you're you're finding new uh places and then you're encountering the guardians and then you have to defeat the guardians and then once you like kind of prove that you're worthy i feel like just because once you defeat beat the guardian or prove your worth to the guardian i think would be a better deal they kind of come to you and then they kind of provide some sort of help so that's why i feel like instead of saying you're defeating them it's like you're showing your worth to this guardian then we played uh wingspan asia i absolutely absolutely love wingspan this is the only expansion slash standalone game that i have of wingspan just because i feel like wingspan just already comes with so many cards it is a tableau builder with beautiful beautiful artwork the oh my god the box you guys also oh my god look at this beauty it's beautiful i know the way that it feels like i'm telling you i'm a freaking packaging whore we have cascadia we can't go a month without playing cascadia this is like for real for real like my favorite like overall game wingspan is probably second there's animals here that like to be a certain particular way you are just kind of building out as well how they want their habitat to be so it's like a double type of puzzle because it's like the animals like to be a certain way but then also the habitat that it is you're trying to kind of like group the habitat as best as possible because all that just kind of scores at the end of the day then we have rad lands i really enjoy this game but unfortunately the people that i have played this game don't like it and like i've said this many many times i am mainly a solo gamer oh my god look at this artwork y'all think mad max 
awesome. We played for the very first time Mary Madness. When I heard about this game, I had to absolutely grab it because I, if you haven't been able to tell, I love The Nightmare Before Christmas. It's just one of my all time favorite movies. And this one, I believe there's some other game. I think it's like a Mickey Mouse game that's like a kitchen thing. I don't know, you guys. It is madness for sure, you guys. And it's really, really cool. It's kind of like that um, right, left. I don't, uh, there's like a little game. I forgot the name of it. But you're rolling dice and the dice will tell you what needs, what item in your little deal needs to be passed either to the right to the left and how many or it needs to go to like Santa's deal. But it's like really, really fast paced. And <laughs> probably shouldn't have played it standing up. But then you kind of like start chunking all the stuff. You go three rounds and whoever has the most presents at the end is the winner and I I love it it's, it's it's great it's super simple to teach as well we literally it was like two minutes not even that long you guys uh, then grab it uh, play casting shadows this is one of those games that you need more players honestly uh, but it's quite adorable it's really really cute you're just fighting and you're just trying to kill the other person while you're on an adorable little deal I just feel that you are able to morph into their next deal pretty quickly. I kind of wish it wasn't as fast because uh, obviously you're trying to get to the bigger deal just so you can use that power. Literally, you, you can do it like in a turn or two and I just feel like I kind of would like to stay as the baby a little bit longer if that makes sense. I don't know. It's like a minor deal. Then we played... E.T. The Extraterrestrial Light Years Away. Oh my god, you guys, this game is so freaking good. It's, um, uh, you have little E.T., you put them in your basket, you're playing the kids, and you're literally trying to help E.T., um, go back home, you're trying to call the mothership, you're trying to build, you're trying to build the device to get E.T., well, you're trying to collect the supplies to have E.T. build the, the stuff that's needed so we can call E.T. I don't know about these dice, y'all. Because you can never get a damn uh, phone die, and you can't call ET's mama to come and get him. They're they're off, you guys. Dice are off here. I don't know. They're like cursed dice. Um, you're trying to stay away from all the agents and the cop cars. The cop cars will surround the extraction point. They know. They got the deets of what they need to do. It's a stressful game. It's so good. I played this at two player and I played this at three player and it's chaos both times. I feel like people are really sleeping on this game because this is a pretty new game, I believe. Um, I think this had Target, y'all. Uh, but I think it just came out last year. Then I finally got Camel Up. It's my first time ever playing it. I've heard so many, many great things about it. And oh my God, Frank, you look adorable. Come here and show everybody. You're just a dog boy. Bot? Dog yeah. bot? Oh my gatos. Pero perros. A ver, dámelo. You're gonna tear it. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Look, you guys. Look what his mama just bought him. He's a dog bot. He looks so cute. He was just like standing over there like, hello, tia, look at me. Three batteries and two are down. So hopefully this one has a larger charge because otherwise... I'm gonna have to wait longer. Is it a racing game? Is it a bidding game? See, it's, it's both. It's everything. I'm gonna count as everything. I don't have much experience with either one of them. So this is just yes on everything. We really, really, really had a really good time with that. Can't wait to play it again. Um, I did uh, play that three players, so I would like to uh, give it a shot. A higher player count. Then we have, I think, one of my only like really, really cute games, Flamecraft. I ended up giving in and 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 getting it because I'm I've been told I don't have that many cute games in my collection. I go more for the darker versions of stuff because that's what I like. My thing with uh, cute games is I don't really see the replayability in them. I see playthroughs and I'm like, okay, it's cute. I like it. Maybe I can play it like at a con, maybe at a game store, but I just don't really find the replayability in them whenever I see playthroughs. But I'm like, okay, this one, I saw a playthrough. It's like, I don't know, maybe it's there. We'll see. It's cute. I need a cute game in my collection. And I got it. And it is extremely light for my taste. Um, Way, way too light for me. This is one that I don't think will 
be staying in my collection very long either. I think I may end up selling it. Cute, love the production of it. They're little artisan dragons. We're like at a market. We're building the market. You're just playing little dragon cards. All of them, um, pretty. I mean, a lot of them pretty much do the same thing. They're just like different colors. Um, with the AI, the AI points at points at times was being a little bitch to me. I don't know. We're probably gonna call him Stevie. But basically, you're kind of going to these shops and you're able to get all the resources that are involved within the shops gathering up the resources or you're enchanting which is um the resource that you that you gathered then you're able to enchant one of those little cards and then you're able to fire up what it says on the card if the particular shop uh lets you which is not the starting card or still be the one that you end up adding up later on all right we have marvel united i do only have this base game and i really really enjoy it you want to get the x-men version of it i'm trying not to go overboard like i did with marvel champions with this just because i'm very very happy with how much game is in this box here especially now that i got my mat but you're just the marvel heroes and you're trying to stop the big bad whoever you decide to play with oh last time i said i don't think he's in a movie but he is he's in one of the captain america movies and i only know that because the other day was on tv and i said oh there it's called that's where you're at all right we're gonna go ahead and stay with marvel and of course marvel champions um we did two player oh i have this box on backwards we did two player i had seen um alex from the board game co talk about this box this upgraded box for marvel um champions and so now i want that box i mean i'm gonna miss this right here but that way i can kind of have everything in that box yeah so same thing like marvel champions you're playing the heroes and you're trying to defeat the big bad but this one is uh i mean they're both card games but this card game just has more to it this one over here uh they each card has like two uh symbols on there and you're able to like do heroic action of fight like punch somebody and you're able to move it's more restricted here but this one just has more to it like you're uh, the, oh you're doing like a storyline with this right you're going around but this one is like you're playing like the comic book version it happens it's not all happening within like a day it's kind of like different deals because you are able to switch between your alter ego and hero mode and you're able to like um there's like scheming involved you're fighting so then we're gonna move on to victorian england and have i become obsessed with obsession um not quite but i am getting there kind of feeling myself a little bit more with this game now that um queen elizabeth the bridgerton story it's on netflix love it uh, it's you know we get more into this right here playing in the background oh i should have probably reviewed queen elizabeth i haven't reviewed any of the bridgerton uh series so i was like oh, i'm not gonna do it then we have cobble and fog unmatched this is the only unmatched game that i have it's like these unlikely characters from all these places movies and shows and stuff and they're just kind of fighting up against each other there's different uh, map map maps maps whatever you're actually able to mix and match and then you have like all your powers you're able to like fight and scheme and protect and 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 move around and it's actually a lot of fun like now that i'm thinking about it it's like, i kind of do one more it's like one of those things like i don't want to but like you want to you know um then we have splendor it's kind of like quacks of quillenberg i'm actually gonna put it down because it's like everything that's every all the stuff it's not a game that needs to be vertical <laughs> because all the the coins fall down uh this kind of like quacks of quillenberg where it takes it a minute to really get enjoyable i think maybe after also like the third round i would say uh once you start again getting your little tableau kind of deal going oh my god though my box is broken y'all i don't even know how that happened <laughs> and it broke right here lord that's so sad i don't even understand how did that break i was like oh devastation y'all collecting gems you are able to get like different colored gems and then once you get a certain amount of gems then you're able to buy a card from the middle from the deal but once you have a card with the gym like that's part of the gems that you now collect all right so now we're coming across the uh smaller box games all right <clears throat> i finally got super uh skill p 
pinball machine. Yo, I can't even say, try to say that fast because I can't say it fast. A pinball, real time board game. I don't know how am I going to feel about it. And this is the only one that really caught, well, this is the first one that I saw. Um, I know there's like a Christmas one, but I don't really care for the Christmas one too much. So I was like, I'll do this one. It feels like you actually are going through the pinball stuff. All right, then we have uh, the Bloody Inn. And then I did play this one solo. Again, it's this one that I quite enjoy solo as well, like more than real people. Video idea, what do y'all think? Um, just some games that are multiplayer, but you prefer them solo. Like some of my favorites, obviously not you, but like multiplayer, not just solo games, right? I don't know, does that make sense? I think that makes sense. Anyway, so let me know what y'all like something like that. I've never done anything like that. You're just an innkeeper and you are like murdering these people. You're thieving, you're bribing them. Then you gotta bury them because the police be coming knocking or staying at your end, but you kind of either decide to bribe the cops and or kill the cop so that way you don't become suspect. Under Falling Skies, this is another real time roll and right solo only game. So if I were to do that video, this would not be contributed within that one. I really, really like it. It's like Space Invaders real time. And I haven't got to, what is it, like a campaign deal? I haven't got to that. But I will at some point. Uh, right now, I'm just kind of enjoying and really kind of learning to play the overall uh, game itself. Then we have Dungeon Sites in Danger. I really, really like this with another roll and write that is backwards over here. This one as well. This one is part of my team writing challenge as well. And I'm, I started going through like the bigger maps. And I just love it. I've talked about this a lot as well. But you're just trying to gather your courage and pack your sword and roll the dice as you journey through the realm in search of treasure and glory rolling roll yeah you're rolling dice you're going through the maze you kind of have to start at the edge or wherever the green stuff is and kind of work your way through it and like i said what well, like i just read here you're trying to pick up um treasures along the way you're trying to defeat some monsters but you're trying to make sure that you have enough uh life left before you get to big pop of monsters because guess what they will fight back and they will possibly kill you. Uh, the thing is when you're playing solo, it's you, your time because if you don't hit a monster each turn, you lose life. And so guess what? Sometimes at the beginning, maybe first two, three go around, you don't get to hit anything. So off the bat, before you even really get into your cave shenanigans, um, you've already lost like three lives. So there's that. Then we have 10. This one is a bang game. And I really, really, really love this game. Uh, this is a 1 to 5 player game. And I think the first one that I played, we played at 6 players. So we were already cheating as it is. But it worked. It was fine. We made it work. Yeah, we made it work. Uh, and then, of course, we have my arch enemy farmer. You're just trying to farm and do your best life. I've talked about this game a lot. Then there's this bitch named Farmer Edith, your neighbor. What did you What did you do to her? I don't know what we did to her, but she'd be hating on you. And she'd be destroying your crops and messing with shit in the farmer's market and the shed and breaking stuff. I don't know. She a half for y'all. We don't like her. Then we have cartographers. King Jim has ordered the reclamation of the Northern Lands. As a cartographer in her service, you are sent to map the territory claiming it for the kingdom of Nano. So yeah, we're just trying to draw stuff as we see it. Uh, there are minions that are coming your way that will mess with you. Then we have a dog lover. I don't have the cat lady one because we are dog people here. And it's another really, really cute game. Um, you're just trying to collect these cards, collect some dogs and make sure that they're fed. So otherwise they're not gonna be happy and it's not gonna count. And it's another really, really cute game. Um, this is 30 minutes on here. I don't think it picked up that long to go. Just like really simple game. I really wish it had a solo mode. I'm not gonna lie, unfortunately. It does not. Unless there's one that somebody has made, let me know, because I would like to play it. Uh, if I could, I would uh, play that one more. Then we have Rolling Realms. And I do want to get more of the packs. Um, it's, it's another Rolling Realms. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of roller rides, right? So looking, you're actually just golfing. You're trying to score a certain amount of points depending on what um, round or hole you're in. I think about because you're playing golf. Hocus Pocus, y'all. Uh, it's a great game. Uh, the packaging, I mean, it's book, right? But it's not the best. I got this one at Target. 
Uh, I just wish it had maybe like a magnetic feel to it. When you're driving to stun the sisters three times, you can actually stun the same sister multiple times. Uh, but it, it's very, very simple. You're really just matching a card with what's on there, like either the the image at, or the color, or it could be both. And each sister um, needs a certain combination of the cards, how they need to be in order to stun them. And there's uh, the cat, the cat. Jinx is there to kind of help you out because it's one of those where you can't really say what's in your hand. You have to ask a question like, hey, do you have a dead man's toe? And then you say yes or no. And then it's like, okay, well I asked it and I'm gonna put it down regardless if you have it or not, aka in our situation. Uh, but if you have jeans, you're able to have your hand down so the people around you know what you have. And then we have Gasha. This is a 25th century gate. Oh my God, it's the only one that I know, 25th century. It's like everything else, oh, who? I don't know. But this is a really, really cute, quick set collector game. Um, this is kind of like uh, the Japanese Gasha machines, aka the little machines, maquinitas at the grocery store where you put your little quarter in and then like, oh, what am I going to get, you know? So at the beginning, at the front of the card, you will have kind of like three things or two um, images on what the card could be. Um, there's goals that you have to complete in order to, like you have to collect certain cards in order to complete the goal card that's there. It's another simple game, but I don't know, there's something about it that I really like. Then we have Ghost Love Candy 2. This is another really cute game. Um, you're playing these ghost cards because, you know, Ghost Love Candy 2, and they're just trying to kind of steal the candy from the, ki the kids. Uh, but each kid has kind of like a scare value, so the card that you play underneath them they kind of end up adding up so you just can't scare that kid because otherwise that's negative points uh there are some kids that will give you positive points but each kid also kind of has like a special ability that they trigger then we have another real time game and this is kites this is a really 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 good game it goes by so so quickly and basically you're just trying to have your kites stay up afloat um there's some little timers here uh, with different colors and you're trying to play the cards uh, so you can flip the, the timers so make sure that they don't run out but you have to make sure that you strategically look and pay attention because it's like if you flip one over you can't flip it too quickly because otherwise it's gonna run out of time really fast um it's so so fun uh great summer game i guess it's gonna be a, a like if we're getting into stuff like that spooky season right here um this is a really really good like summer spring when do people start flying kites? I don't know, you guys, I've never flown a kind in my damn life. Nobody ever taught me. Long shot, the, uh, the dice game. <laughs> yeah, it is the dice game. Um, I really, really love this game. Unfortunately, my dad didn't like it. I talked about that. Uh, but this is a racing game. And you're going off um, in a racing betting game? <gasps> it's like another thing like Camel Up. Yes. Um, so yeah, you're rolling dice and the dice will have you move these horses and each horse has uh, another horse that it will possibly move. You are able to buy the horses, uh, but basically, and you're betting on the horses to see who's gonna win, and it's basically uh, whoever, whichever horse passes the finish line first, the first three horses, those are the ones that count. Then we have Final Girl. I finally was able to play Final Girl. This is the Madness in the Dark, the Ratchet Lady Wolf Asylum. She is hard, y'all. She is hard because she keeps getting life. So this one's like Silent Hill. It's very, very well thematic. It's another one that I guess you could put within spooky season, but also just any time if you want to. You're just the final girl in a scary movie and you're trying to help uh, these victims survive, but then they'll be silly and they'll be running off into danger and you're like, girl, guy, you know, put your ass over here or stop like having sex. Don't you know the rules and that's why you die. That's why you are dead. I just got the expansion But I played parks and I really 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 love the nightfall expansion. It's another one. That's like a really why is this upside down? No sé you guys no sé. I really like the nightfall expansion. It really definitely adds something to the overall game But you're just hiking. It's chill y'all. It's like oh We're just hiking around when you're with other people But it is mean when it is by yourself because you got the ranger and you got that damn little assistant Ranger Bob, I think that's what I called him and then the assistant because it's two rangers. It's like Ranger Bob and then what am I what did I call the other one? 
I don't know. I don't remember what the other one is. The assistant kissing ass. But they be doing shit to y'all. They take away your resources. They they take away your resources. That's like the main thing. I can't remember. That's the one that thing that I remember the most. I'm like, you are mean. What did I do to you? I swear that bottle that you found over there, that wasn't my bottle. I put I recycle. But they didn't believe me. 20 Day Sardines. I really, really, really love this game. Um, it's like a set collecting. You're like trying to make fish for people. Order up. Ding, ding, ding. Um, it's like a little sardine can here, you guys. This is one of those games also that... Oh, it's 25th Century Game? Also, I really like 25th Century Games. This is another one that it is... It is too good to be this good. I don't even know. Because I was like, sardines? I don't know. I don't even know why I got it. But I'm glad that I did. Then we have Town 66. This is another game that I got because Jamie and Jeff from Foster the Meatball talked about it a lot. And I really like this game a lot. It's another one that if I were to do a video, just kind of spoiler alert, this is the one that I would be incorporating in that. And you're just kind of building your little town, this little fussy town. And they don't want their neighborhood to be the same. Oh, no, sorry. They don't want the row in the column to be the same. It's like, we don't want the same color. We don't want the same shape. They have to be different. Fussy, fussy people. Finally got Scout to the table. I bought this a while ago. This is my second time playing it. The first time I played it was last year at BGG Con where I learned it. Really enjoyed it. I've been wanting to play it again. Haven't for one reason or another been able to play it. Um, we were supposed to play it at three player, but didn't happen. Two player, it was fine, but I did prefer it at three. Then we have Ouch. This is another super cute, cute, fast game. Uh, it's a set collector and basically you have the cards face down they all have these little flowers you're basically trying to collect flowers from these cactus and you're just going to decide if you're wanting to get it from like the top the right the left or the bottom you're just going to be like okay i'm going to grab it and then you're going to flip it then we have winter and I think this is another game that i saw jeff and jamie from foster the people talk about and i was like okay let me let me try it out it's just a two player only and you are basically just trying to get some snowflakes together and like then they're gonna melt the first part is like two parts to it it's like you're building up these little snowflakes and then you're kind of taking them apart and then they're gonna float away and melt that's terrible i'm, I'm not explaining that very well i haven't explained nothing very well it's a really good game it's also kind of puzzly kind of stressful there at the end the second part definitely takes longer we're here to button shy games we're just gonna go through them um quickly food chain island is kind of like hunger games but like animal feel i want to get my with it numsters i really want to get that game too but it's great they have powers you gotta do stuff trigger stuff ugly griffin in you're raining the m part of it they're at the bar and then they kind of go into the end and you're kind of stacking them and then you kind of see like are they going to be happy or are they going to leave you have to make sure you have like i think like eight guests at the end sprawlopolis was my first button shy game you're basically building a city a town a city i think it is rove solo game only you're doing stuff <laughs> my brain is so like you guys i don't really like rove <laughs> I really don't. I think I'm, I may end up having, it's another one that I may end up just gifting to somebody. So that is all that I played within the month of April. It was a lot, you guys. It was a lot. We're trying to keep it. I know it's gonna be a long video. I know I was, I was trying not to linger too much. Try not to linger. But let me know down below if you played any of the same any of the same things. Kind of hard to think what I'm what I'm trying to say here because I'm trying to revert back to what I say with my movie stuff. If you haven't already, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe comment share all the good stuff uh thank you so much for watching and until next time i'll see you guys at concessions bye